Hello. So Hi. first question, what is postmodernism? Um, so like as architect, we look at uh, like postmodern architecture, uh, um, which is an eclectic and a colorful movement uh, that uh, um, emerged in the 60s uh, as a reaction to uh, modernism and especially to its uh, like formality, its uh, supposed purity, its uh, austerity and, uh, and, and uh, uniformity, um, proposing uh, um, something more exuberant uh, with uh, like ornaments, uh, with the colors, uh, uh, but also uh, something that could uh, uh, create more relations to the contexts uh, and the cities uh, uh, it was emerged. Um, I have to add something, right? <laughs> I'm thinking uh, that to me, postmodernism also, and maybe not just in architecture, it's a bit the end of grand and compass in total stories, but the emergence of an idea of reality made of fragments, made of uh, not a sort of one linear future on which we're all kind of heading together, but rather of the possibilities of many uh, different futures that probably kind of happen and develop and unfold um, at the same time, no? and which are often maybe sort of contradictory, but perhaps in this also a bit more, uh, more generous to the individual. And I think probably architecture of the time with multiple voices uh, of postmodernism told us something about that. Then the second question. Um, which figure from the first generation of postmodernists postmodernist, uh, do you consider particularly relevant to your own work? Uh, yeah, we were a bit confused about this uh, first generation, but I'm, I studied in Venice in Europe and there I had the fortune of meeting uh, at the time already quite old uh, uh, professor called Luciano Semeani who was very close to, um, with Gigetta Tamayo, his uh, lifetime partner actually made also some beautiful projects, including the hospital in Venice, the new hospital in Venice. And uh, he was um, close to John Iduk and uh, he was telling a story of um, John Iduk, which kind of stuck with me, which uh, uh, also gave a bit of a sense, maybe something I actually understood a bit later, a bit after he told the story. The story was, an exercise, one of an exercise that John Eindruck would give to his students where, I don't remember it word by word, but it had to do with Chu hermits living on the peak of Chu mountains and the architectural exercise was to connect uh, these, uh, to allow a meeting between these two, uh, these two, uh, these two people. And uh, he was, uh, Semeani was telling the story I'd see in some of these reviews of a sort of panic amongst the students, right? Um, and the, the, the panic probably came from the fact that the assignment was not uh, indeed a sort of modernist assignment of uh, designing a bridge between the two, uh, but rather of designing the encounter between the two, of designing the journey and the space in between uh, the meeting, let's say, not just to sort of allow him or making the meeting possible, but it was also a question of hows. And also, maybe in relation to this, uh, um, something that we quite appreciate about postmodernism is uh, an attempt to, towards humanism, an attempt to design, uh, taking, like, especially coming uh, like after postmodernism, attempt to design uh, at a certain human scale. And uh, like one of the, my, my favorite, favorite buildings uh, is uh, um, the new uh, Star Gallery by uh, James Stirling. Uh, and especially what I really love is uh, um, the fact is a public building, but it's a public building that is not only an enclosure where uh, like uh, the public uh, the space is not only inside the museum, but is really designed in this kind of uh, promenade uh, in, uh, as a public space that is connecting two different parts uh, of the city. So it's uh, a public space that is made by alleys, uh, ramps, uh, by a rotunda that hosts this uh, like a square with uh, um, statues that is uh, at parts it looks a little bit like an infeum or uh, indeed it is inspired by classicity and um, and I really love this uh, uh, this uh, this maze of public spaces also because uh, it creates a different kind of uh, um, possible relation and possible possibilities of encounters uh, um, for example and, and offers uh, ways to look at or be looked at or be being looked at looked at uh, but also to hide uh, or uh, to like look at something from different heights. So yeah, this is something that uh, maybe we really love, or I really love and appreciate, and also relates to uh, this design of the encounter that uh, Giovanni was mentioning, uh, uh, like from Hajduk. 
So John Iduk and James Sterling, <laughs> because we probably got lost there with the anecdotes. Uh, should I read the third question? Uh, yes. Uh, um, what role does architectural history play in shaping your work? Uh, well, I think that uh, um, for us, uh, like a source of inspiration more than a pedigreed architecture is maybe something that goes beyond uh, um, traditional architecture. So we are often really inspired by uh, types or archetypes uh, uh, that refer or inform architecture. Uh, for example, uh, like we, we, we are always inspired by carpets, uh, aviaries, uh, uh, or like uh, uh, forms of the territories, uh, like heaps uh, or like uh, floating structures. Uh, and um, and, and uh, all this, I mean, we remember also listening to like a, a presentation about the work of Aldo Rossi. And at, at the end, like we realized that he was also looking into certain references that are also dear to us. So uh, for example, for his uh, like floating guard, floating, uh, um, Teatro del Mondo, he was, he was looking uh, at uh, um, uh, like floating structure of uh, Carnival in Venice uh, uh, from uh, like the um, 18th century, he was looking at uh, Elizabethan, Elizabethan theatres uh, and so on. Um, I don't know if you want to add uh, um, something. Role of architectural history. Yeah, I don't, I... It's, I'm thinking that uh, maybe like one trait that we like to think that we share with Stirling is a certain kind of liberal attitude towards uh, architectural history. We think that in a sort of globalized uh, world, so many uh, offers, so many ideas are somewhat not just sort of available in a terms of like being reachable. I think they, they've been reachable for quite a long time. But for better or worse, they have also somehow been, been flattened again. So in a way, maybe historiography plays a lesser role than a sort of conflation in the present of the past, right? And maybe with the end of an idea of a sort of future to which, towards which we all go together, uh, but rather the feeling that we're inscribed in some kind of circularity where things mm -hmm. kind of come and, and leave us and then come back, um, we find in that something somewhat uh, liberating in the possibility of kind of curating and understanding many, many stories, not as kind of completely burdened and stratified in history, but rather history is something that you sort of keep uh, rewriting. And I think this is why Ali is also mentioning the sort of marginalia, right? The, the, all the kind of collateral events that mm. lead to architecture, right? Mm. Um, yeah, also maybe something that uh, <laughs> ah, connects to this. Uh, I mean, I don't, yeah, I, one of my favorite texts uh, in uh, uh, that I enjoy the most is by Ungers uh, and it's called the Urban Garden. Uh, and he's also talking about uh, this relation with the past as uh, this kind of uh, continuum that keeps transforming, uh, becoming something else. Uh, and uh, um, he's uh, referring, for example, to the Adrian's Villa, which is also, <coughs> uh, I just visited it uh, like while I was uh, uh, like in Rome in the past months. Uh, and uh, I loved how he's talking about uh, the, the Ad Adrian Villa as this kind of uh, recollection of fragments Arguments that talks about a possible future. So the Emperor Adrian basically collected all these kind of uh, architectural references uh, around the world. So there is a fragment uh, of uh, uh, the El Teo, there is a fragment, fragments from Egypt, uh, there is uh, um, the Teatro Maritimo, which is the, the Maritime Theater, that is this miniature world that refers uh, to um, Gorgons uh, and other uh, maritime creatures. So, so, yeah, there is a something about this kind of uh, talks about like some certain uh, relation to history that is, uh, uh, that is made through fragments uh, that then created this city that is made by all these fragments. Uh, uh, from the past that creates a new future. So it's, uh, I think this is something that is also quite important uh, to us. Uh. Yeah, as if a perception of a distant past was not there, no? but it was always a sort of close relative of the present. Yeah. And uh, okay, the uh, fourth question is, uh, uh, how does your approach to history differ uh, from the one of the first generation uh, of postmodernists? Uh, um we live in a very different time i think we are not reacting to some kind of overarching ideology within which we want to carve out infinite possible futures i think uh, we are not reacting to the century of the machine in a way we're maybe completely in a century of the environment 
And perhaps we are, we, I say we, maybe the, the two of us and others, I think we're reacting uh, to an obsession with optimization. So we're reacting to an obsession with making the present as efficient as it can be, while we would actually strive for the possibility of a sort of future present, which we hope to be different from the present present. Um, so I, I, I think the, the, the world we're immersed in is very different. Things remain, the tools and, and methods, and just the fact that we think that sort of postmodern language and fear and offers are somewhat uh, close to us. Uh, that's for sure one of, the, one of the legacies. But I think the, the urgencies are a bit different. In particular for us, the, the accent, I think, falls more and more on, um, let's say, actions of kind of, of care, or to use a more humble word, really of maintenance, and not just the maintenance of the urban fabric in sort of preservation sense, but actually of taking care of the stuff that we do, of the objects that we build, thinking about their, their life. And by that, I, I, I really mean their life, as a, maybe as we sort of begin to challenge uh, the line between the um, the sort of human and the non-human, right? And, uh, and uh, the object and the material and the sort of maybe living matter that kind of gave gave birth to it, right? Between the object and the labor that went into it, mm. you know? To make that so with shells, that means we had an animal 10,000 years ago and now we have calcium and that becomes an object, right? And it will become soil again. So I think the 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 focus that we have is maybe a bit more tied to the processes of sort of, of uh, maintenance and of uh, care and of uh, labor uh, and that the life of a building beyond um, that, that one image, the moment the building is, is kind of closed or sort of open to the public and the, and the construction site is closed, let's say. So I think that's maybe one major yeah. um, st step. And also for us, uh, yeah, as Giovanni was mentioning, something that it's uh, really like important is uh, the way all these uh, uh, words that we try to create uh, get inhabited uh, and uh, get all these kind of different authorships uh, at different stages of the process. Uh, so like from the production uh, to uh, the, the actual inhabitation and this is a project of uh, care and cultivations of the projects uh, after uh, we uh, place them. Uh, somewhere. So for example, in a playground that we built in Utrecht, uh, it is made by a series of uh, um, sculptorial uh, waved forms. Uh, I think uh, there there are two aspects. So in a way there is a formality, but the formality is not the statement. Uh, so for us, uh, like the statement or like the forms actually comes from, I mean, in a way they are inspired by hedges of gardens, uh, uh, baroque hedges of gardens, or by uh, like a study of different type of garden walls. Uh, and so on, but, uh, but these forms are actually uh, um, uh, designed to be appropriated or following affordances uh, uh, and, and, and to study different possibilities of actions so for children uh, to, to climb, to play hide and seek, uh, um, uh, uh, to, and, and, and to explore. So maybe this is also something that for us, it's, uh, it's maybe it's a bit different than uh, other, like these cultural forms of modernism that in a way were also the statement. What is the role of figuration in your work? Question number five. Um, uh, yeah, I think uh, there are uh, like different aspects uh, um, that we would like to maybe address with this question. Um, I think something that is uh, uh, quite important for us uh, uh, is uh, like when, when we approach a project to design at a different scales uh, and when we design at different scales uh, we we also uh, like one of the scales the scale of the material so something that for us is very important is also this uh, this uh, materialization or this uh, new material vocabulary uh, that for us more than an or ornament uh, is a way to tell stories so Giovanni for example mentioned that this uh, terrazzo with shells uh, and uh, and uh, and uh, this one is something that we we made for uh, our first build actually, which is uh, the Art Pavilion M that uh, opened in, uh, in Almere and Floriade like a few months ago. And, and for us, uh, like this material, which we call Terrazzo Serpent Turf, uh, was a way to address uh, actually the history of the region of Flevoland, which was at the bottom of the sea that became agricultural land, so the largest reclamation project in the world uh, last century. 
and um, and uh, uh, but the project also has uh, a series of planetary relations uh, with, with the openings uh, aligned to uh, summer and winter solstice and this to say that the figuration uh, is uh, uh, perhaps uh, something that we try to address at different scales so from uh, from the terrazzo from the uh, the mixture uh, uh, of uh, like insertions in the floor or the counter or objects uh, to other larger uh, planetary scales. I don't know if, uh, if you want to address um, this in a different way. Yeah, this question actually left confused me a little bit because figuration, it's different from figurative, but in Italian, I don't think we really have an alternative to figure to figurative. Um, I just have this. Uh, just in the work that we do, I'm thinking of the, you know, we, we would make a table for us and our bird, and perhaps it would have one of the leg of the table would have shingles that look like feathers, or it would have a kind of bird foot as a, as a, as a footing, but somehow, but we will not shape the table as a, as a bird, right? We would uh, think that maybe there's um, perhaps that there are levels of uh, storytelling at every scale of a project. And I think maybe this is what you were saying, right? That the, the material tells a story. Uh, and, the, and, and, and some scales, even ones that we don't occupy, right? The, the work of the artisan, how it's made, tells a story. But of course, the, the plan tells a story, the, the outline of the, of, the, of the edge of the wall, right? When we, when we work with, uh, with um, uh, how is it called? Swallowtail, Codadia on these motives now that come from, from kind of garden hedges, which are actually kind of botanical translations, which then become mineral ornaments and then kind of come back as maybe repurposed or recast objects and outlines of buildings. So I think this kind of endless uh, inheritance of uh, uh, shapes and yeah. forms and stories for us sort of unfolds, not just in the drawn outline, but I think also in the sort of conceptual and material layers of the project. But, no, yes. Okay, <laughs> we did our <laughs> best. So uh, last question should, is... Should I? Ah, this uh, is a great class. Yeah, like what makes postmodernity relevant in current times? Uh, hmm, mm -hmm. Um, it may be brought uh, back for, and for, I mean, for the good and the bad of it, it brought back the, the individual as a sort of actor in society rather than the sort of mass, right? And maybe it did so on, on many levels. Uh, later on, uh, maybe it brought back also the idea of sort of nature, not as a sort of generic mass, but as a, as a sort of composition of stories, a sort of contradictory term, again, no? And um, I, I think this kind of uh, maybe sort of atomization of the possibilities of stories, which didn't probably lead, but more maybe responding to what was happening in uh, certain, some societies at least, um, is, is obviously there. And perhaps what we feel is that um, it could be a bit more joyful than the sort of uh, either austere uh, or um, kind of um, technophilic uh, um, way in which we would look at the future now, right? Yeah. So maybe this kind of possibility of many different futures with different responses to uh, shared urgencies, I, I think is, uh, is a sort of very, potentially very sort of beautiful legacy. Yeah, and then uh, like Venturi, like already in uh, complexity and contradiction, was really talking about uh, uh, an hybrid architecture versus something that was uh, like a supposedly pure architecture or something that was a compromising versus something that was actually clean, uh, something accommodating versus something that was excluding or something uh, messy and vital versus something uh, or like that was obviously one and uh, um, Unity was talking about uh, not only like a black and white architecture, but something with a series of uh, gradients of gray. So uh, I think these aspects, uh, like we still feel that are quite relevant and uh, maybe like with time are also leading towards this uh, like humanism or post-humanism uh, that, uh, yeah, like Giovanni was mentioning. Yeah, I think we can end it with this idea of sort of of gradients and fragments, right? Of uh, not having a sort of, uh, good and bad black and white world, but actually uh, the necessity to inhabit a project of gradients and uh, in the absence of a kind of uh, shared, uh, complete, uh, totalizing cultural guide, the necessity to 
ask sort of a lot of questions and and take take a lot of positions uh talk to a lot of people no so in a way to sort of embrace the gradients of things and perhaps to um, maybe in terms of what gives us sort of hope the possibility actually of of uh, these kind of many worlds uh, being built one on top of the other right and the possibility of working on maybe geographically spatially materially sort of relatively small things but thinking of them as fragments of uh, invitations and sort of fragments in the sense of sort of usable inhabitable shareable one-to-one um, -one pieces of a, of, a, of a possible future right um great well thanks thank you <laughs> bye